All right. So I am Ashley Baker. I am Ruby ambassador and, um, Kinsley, or Kinley and I actually started following each other on Facebook. It was like last spring sometime. I actually went back in our messages to see when we started talking. Um, and it was, I had posted a something in my story over a cream cheese and jelly sandwich or something. And she's like, that looks so good. And we just kept talking from there. So um, she's inspired me so big over the past year and just seeing her journey and her team and just their growth and they're constantly cheering each other on. And it's just like the momentum they have is absolutely incredible. So I'm super honored um, to introduce Kinley. She is a busy um, salon owner. She's a mama too. Um, she, and she lives in Illinois. So I will let her um, get started with sharing her story about how and why she started Plexus. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that introduction. That makes me laugh so hard that that's how our conversation started was a jelly sandwich because it makes perfect sense. Was it cream cheese and jelly, right? Yep, it was cream cheese and jelly. And then you're like, hey, you remind me of a girl from high school and her name was Ashley, but it wasn't That's me. That's so but funny. Now and we then talk. We started talking often we talk so. all the time yeah yes okay so my journey with plexus um probably similar to a lot of people's started with the products um was hesitant to do the business uh finally got convinced to do the business by demi who's above me my sponsor and then once i started i still wasn't like full force like i am now it was very like oh, maybe I'll get my products paid for. Okay, maybe I'll make a little extra money. It just was kind of like a slow start for me. Um, and as time went on, I think I I started to see the vision more. You know, there were, they did a lot. Oh, I precious little baby. Watch um, what? <laughs> sorry. Uh, so yeah, once I started to really visualize what was possible with this company, and I think that that's something important that you need to do for your downline is to cast vision all the time of what is possible, whether that's financial trips, incentives, you know, whatever speaks to that person. Um, you kind of get to know, I feel like, who who vibes off of what. But for me, it just it clicked one day. I think it was between gold and senior gold. And it was just like, OK, I want to go to the top. Like, I want to be on that stage. You know, convention was huge for that. I want to be on that stage. I want to be a diamond like, and I have not looked back since. And it has been a lot of work. It has been a lot of hard work. Um, but it's showing up consistently every single day. Um, and pouring as much into my team as I can. I mean, I didn't start this journey thinking I would be a leader. Like it's not something that I feel like is natural for me. Um, I remember, getting to a point where I had a few people on my team and I was like, oh gosh, what do I do with them? What do I do? What if I mess up? What if I say the wrong thing? And it just, I kind of figured out that being who I am and, you know, grabbing the information from my uplines and, and learning every day still, but also making it work for like my team culture, because we are creating our own little culture here, you know? And I think that that's such an important thing and it's going to look different for every team, but for us, it's it's very much an extremely bonded friendship, and we have a lot of fun. Like, we laugh a lot, we have fun, but they are some of the hardest working people I have ever met. So we know how to balance those things, right? Hard work and fun. So that's kind of been my, I guess, start to now journey. Um, I do have two girls, uh, two little girls, and I do do hair full time, so I juggle all of it. So it's possible when people tell you it's not, it is. Um, and yeah. Love that. And I love um, recently you posted something you're like, I finally found something I, I'm good at. And yes, like, I was just like, yes. Like, and it feels so good to be able to help people. And I feel like watching you um, grow a team and everything, like you're really good at it and you're really good at connecting with people, even if it's just over a jelly and, uh, peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> but um, we would love for you to share a little bit more about your journey to Diamond. And specifically, if you could look back um, and there's one thing that could make it 
could have made it easier for you or um, and one hardship that you're really thankful for that helped you grow to where you're at now? Okay, so probably hardship wise, I think I think for me, putting that pressure on myself when I say I'm going to hit a goal, um, I know that this is a good thing because it's why I'm where I'm at, but there is a little piece of me that's like, I probably a couple times put a little too much pressure on myself. And <laughs> that wasn't coming from anybody but me. Um, I think there are times I wish that I could have just like taken a moment, taken a breath and just like, you know what I mean? Not been so hard on myself, I guess, because it would have made those months of certain ranks a little bit more enjoyable. Um, I don't think I would change anything, honestly. Um, I feel like everything that I have done thus far in this entire journey has gotten me to where I'm at and has, I have learned like literally from every experience, whether it be good or bad, it has been learning. And I think that that's so important. I think the fails that I've had are just as important as the wins um, because those come in such handy when I am like, have a new team member who's feeling really low and they're like, I'm not, I'm not getting any of this. I'm not getting any of that. And I'm like, listen, I, or I'm not in fast start anymore. I was like, and it's, it's nice for me to be able to look at them and be like, okay, like I didn't even hit fast start senior gold. So that it's okay. You can still succeed. You can still do great. You don't have to right out the gate, just be this huge, you know, runner. It's, it's so customizable for every person. And I think that that's something that you just have to realize is not every single person is going to want it like you do. So try to find the ones that do. And then the ones that don't, just don't put as much into them. Let them come to you when they're ready, you know? Right, right. Like meet them where they're at and know. And you're so good at connecting with people too. I know that we kind of talked about that too. Like just knowing where they're at and what they want and asking them right at the get-go, but still loving on them. So um, yeah. I love that. Um, how do you manage being a full-time salon owner um, and with your little girls and building? Because I know your girls are busy and you're always posting about them in your story. So how do you handle all of that and balance it? Well, right now my little one's in the bath and I can see her right here. So I'm handling that with this. So there's that. A lot of multitasking. Um, they're very involved. My kids, they're very into plexus. <laughs> they're very involved with my daily plexus things. I mean, they, they're excited about it, right? You've seen, I've taken them on every trip. Um, they, and my husband, he's a part of it. He helps, you know, run numbers for me. He does so much. I couldn't do this without, without him. He's really like the backbone behind the scenes guy for all, you know, I might be doing hair all day, but he's got my numbers ran for the day for me. He's he, helping with my team. If they're needing vouchers or different things like that, like he's there to help and pick up those pieces. And plus, I also just have a really good team of people that all just, we all take care of each other. Like I have girls on different legs that help each other out. And that might be frowned upon in some teams or atmospheres like, oh, you're not helping. You're not under her. So you can't help her. That's just how we, that's just how we are. It's who we are. And I think that that is so important. And that is, again, something that's in our like little culture, right? Like we just love each other. We all freaking love each other and we help each other where we can. And I think that that is a huge reason how I'm able to do all of this is because of the team I have too, you know? Right. I love that. And it's like the one plexus culture all around too. Cause like you and I, we're not on the same team, but I'll message you and like cheer you right. on. And I love um, seeing that for your team. And I saw that Lizzie is on here too. Um, and she just um, ranked senior Ruby, right? A Ruby? One of your girls? Ruby. Ruby, Ruby. yep. That's yep. awesome. There should be a few. Um, I love that. <laughs> well, what else? Um, how do you stay motivated? Because I know that we all kind of like have our days that, and you're not always going to have the motivation, but how do you like stay with it even on your down days? Um, that's really funny that you asked that. Cause I feel like that was not really ever like a big issue for me just cause I want it's so bad that I just, I'm a very self-motivated person. I know that doesn't help, but I will say, <laughs> I was just talking to a couple of the girls today that like my family and I have just getting over a really bad sickness. We had influenza A and I 
felt like these last couple days, like I have felt so like blah and like, I don't want to do anything and I don't want to, you know what I mean? And it's like, today I was like, no, okay, like stop it. I just, sometimes you have to like blare some music, slap yourself out of it and just be like, come on, we got this, move along. Um, a lot of, a lot of pep talks with my girls, um, them with me, me with them, like constantly just pouring into each other and, and being excited about every single order that they get, because it truly is. We cheer each other on for every order. We just like keep motivating each other. And I think that that's huge too. Yes. And that keeps everyone like picks everyone up. Yeah. So, um, and I know that our team is like that too. If we're like, and just putting that head trash out there, the brain dump, just get it out there and we move forward. We fail forward and rise on up. Um, what do you, what do you look for? Or who do you look for when you're um, looking for leaders to, um, or what did you look for to, in leaders to help you um, build your team? Um, you know, I, feel like a lot, I would say almost every single one of my leaders, business builders have all come from trying the products first. Um, but I really, I pretty much ask every single person that signs up with me. Like I pretty much always tell them about the referral thing. I just make it really casual. I don't want them to feel like come sell with me, you know, cause that we don't want to come off I guess like pushy, salesy, whatever. So I, I approach it very mildly and I'm very much like, Hey, if you have any friends or family members that want to do this with you, let me know. There's an awesome referral program. You can make a little bit of money and I just make it really casual. And I just keep going back, you know, and keep going back. Like there are girls on my team that took me, I mean, there's girls on my team selling right now that took me a year in the making to get them to sell. There are girls that, started selling the moment I asked them to start selling. There are ones that took a couple weeks. There are one, but I don't give up on any of them. Unless somebody literally is like, Kinley, shut up and leave me alone. Like I don't leave people alone. I don't, I never stop. I don't give up on them. Um, Becca was one recently on my team. She's amazing. And she sells beauty counter. And she was just very much like, she kept putting it off. She's like, okay, I'll start in this. I'll start in February. I'll start in the, and it just, she kept putting it off. <laughs> and then finally, I I think it naturally, she's a hairstylist too. I think she naturally got a sale. Somebody wanted to buy collagen that was in her chair and that kind of started it. And I just remember her being like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing this. And now she's like, so thankful every day. She's like, what, like, what an awesome experience and community. And, but it, it wasn't easy always to get those people, you know, like, it's not going to always be this, like, they don't see it. So we have to, you have to vision cast for them really over and over and over sometimes. Right. I think it's so important to be consistent with sharing um, the vision and the opportunity <laughs> with everyone, just like we share the products and how much they've changed for us. So I love that. Um, do you have any top advice for someone that is just starting um, the products or wanting to grow the business and they're not really sure, like they, like they know that they want it, but they don't know really where to start? Um, yeah, so I definitely would say that's so hard because I feel like it's most of the time you're going to run into people that have like a mental block there because they're so worried what other people will think. Um, so I just constantly will tell people like, be who you are, right? Be true to who you are be open about what struggles you had before you took these products. Be, you know, with what you're comfortable with posting on the internet, I put it all out there. I don't care. So I just tell them like, as long as you're comfortable with it, put out there why you started these products, whether that, you know, what that reasoning is, it doesn't really matter, but connect with people, show them who you truly are. And you have to not worry about what the haters, whatever you have to not worry about what those people will think because at the end of the day, why do you care, right? Like if you can sit down and ask yourself, why do you care? And who do you care that's going to see this? Is it, you know, Sally from high school? Who cares? 
what is she doing for your life right now? You know, is she paying your bills? Is she helping with inflation? Is she, you know, and it's like, sometimes people just need to hear that simple of a thing to really just be like, you know what? You're right. Why do I care? You know? Right. Like change your perspective on it. And that like, it's about you. It's not about them. It's about you. Like you be you. Yep. Um, one second. You're muted. You're muted. Ah, that's weird. <laughs> I was like talking. Like, oh. I've done um, that before. <laughs> I don't even know what I said last then. Whoops. Um, do, does anyone else have questions? We can open it up. And if you want to drop them in the chat, um, and then I can, then we can ask Kinley some questions. Because my list of questions that I had for her are, she's done an amazing job. So, <laughs> um, Brie asks, what type of events work best for your team? So like in person or do you do like messenger events or what do you do for your team that works? That's a good question. We actually talk all the time about doing in-person ones, like as far as like, like pink parties or whatever, but we never really do it just because getting us all together is, is kind of hard. And then by the time we get together, we're all just like so excited to see each other and we're just hanging out. Um, <clears throat> honestly, messenger parties, if, if we do an event, a quick 15 minute messenger party is, is golden for our team. Um, but most of what we do honestly is a lot of posting, a lot of stories, a lot of being, you know, being on your stories as much as possible, you know, being authentic, being who you are, and reach outs. I mean, we, we are not a stranger to a good reach out and a, a cold message have you, but we're very, I guess, personal when we do those. They're not, we, I don't really like believe in like scripted, like, here's what we send to our people. Like we just, I just, we don't do that. Right. And I love that. And I can see that in your stories too. You just, sometimes in your stories, you just like talk and then you're like me in a tangent of somewhere else. Yep. And then it's just like, you're Kinley and you just like <laughs> you hit people where they're at though. Like, and it just, it's good. Um, Bethany asked, once you caught the vision, how did that change what you were doing and how were you showing up and how you were showing up? Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so once I kind of like got to that point, hold on, babe. What? Sorry, my child. Sit down. Um, once I, got that vision and I knew I wanted to, you know, make this like a thing. Um, I think it just, it went from like, you know, you have extra time in life to do things like read a book or watch a show. Or I just decided that like those things could take a back seat for a while in my life. And I could focus all of my extra time and energy on this because of where I want to go with it. And I knew I needed to make that shift. And I needed to sacrifice those things, which, you know, reading a book and watching a Netflix show doesn't sound like a big deal. But like when when that's your, you know, moment in life, it is. You, Yeah, I just I sacrifices, you know, small sacrifices that add up for the greater good. Love that. That's what Bethany just says. Short term sacrifice, long term gain. Um, I was just thinking because um, I know last June when you're in Nashville, you had wrote on the wall like. I'm going to be diamond and you were Ruby or senior Ruby at that time last June when you wrote that. So it's been, it was six months, seven months from then till you hit diamond. So, um, just, I know, I don't know how many people on here are planning to go to Vegas, but how much did Nashville change for you? Like an in-person event for convention, how much did that change for you and inspire you to just like, let's do this. I'm doing it. Yeah, that's, that was like a monumental moment. And I'm so glad that I wrote that on that wall. Like me and Demi both were like diamond by convention 2024. Like that was our goal. And obviously I did it and she did it. We both, she went diamond the month before me and I can't stress enough how important convention is. And like, so Jen, Jen's above Demi. I remember Jen being like, if you pick one Flexus trip, to Why? Go, it should be convention. Like that is like, the main one you should be going to. It's the most important trip ever. And it changed so much for me. I mean, I went, yeah, I was senior Ruby. I, number one, 
you see at convention that emerald and above you look around and you're like uh i want that they have like a special room back there they get to like eat food and stuff i want to eat that food like it sounds silly but all that stuff was like exciting to me and like very like okay i want to feel special like I want that chair that says emerald or diamond or sapphire on the back of it. Like I want to go on that stage and hold a giant oversized jewel, you know, like that. I, I like cool stuff <laughs> that like was a big vision casting for me. So convention just in general is one of the most magical experiences that I've ever had. But, and that was before even, you know, being where I'm at now, I can't even imagine how amazing it's going to be in Vegas. Like, I would say any person that can get to convention, like, I don't care if you're a silver or a ruby or a diamond, I don't care, get to convention because it will change everything. I mean, I went, what, convention was June, I went emerald in July, sapphire in September, and then diamond in February. So it, a huge part of that was because of convention. Chills. That's amazing. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any more questions in chat I don't see any and I know that you and Lee were able to um like you've been sweeping contests and everything too with um your team so with um the cruise and Puntacana and then you went to um the Emerald Extravaganza in September so you've really been inspiring Bree, do you have any more oh lauren says what's one thing you don't <laughs> go to bed without doing that day if anything so with your team or anything oh, oh that's a good that's... one too what are your favorite podcasts for motivation so there's two of them sorry oh okay so what do i what do i not go to like what do i make sure i do before going to bed each night yeah what's one okay. thing that you just always do i guess that like you make sure you do with your team or personal about your business. Non-negotiable. I think that's, Ooh, that's a good one. Um, oh, I, I want to say non-negotiable would be to hit like a daily, like the daily goal I have for the day, but that's obviously not always the case. Um, uh, that is, that's a really loaded question. I don't even know that I fully have an answer for that. Um, you know, I, hmm, mm -mm, I don't know. Maybe you can I get back to, to me on that one. You should get back to you on that. That's like a really deep question. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know. Um, someone said, do you mostly reach people through social media? Samantha yes. said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um uh I think like doing hair in person helps too, but like I would say like still 90, maybe 85% of my sales come from social media um, the, the rest from hair clients. So it's definitely helpful. I mean, it's definitely something that, you know, put me in a good place for it. Um, and then it was the favorite podcast for motivation. Do you listen to any podcasts or anything? I don't, I I'm so bad about listening to like people talk as I'm sitting here talking for you guys. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I just don't do it. Um, Here's my motivational thing that I do. I listen to like Billy Joel and um, I listen to like just good old 80s, 90s, maybe some 70s. And I just jam out when I need that motivation. Music does it for me. I love that. And that just so you. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't see any more questions in the um, chat there. We've got like five minutes. Bree, do you have anything or? I have loved this so much, Kinley, just because I think that sometimes, and you guys drop a one in the chat if you've been inspired by her realness tonight, because that's what I love so much about this opportunity. I don't know about y'all, but when I was first starting to build or even just thinking about it, and this was eight years ago, it was like, ah, but now I have to fit this mold and I have to do what this person's doing and I have to do what this person's doing. And when we get into those lanes where we feel like we have to match other people, it diminishes why we do this, right? And 
I don't know about you guys, but that's what I hear tonight from you, Kinley. And that's what I love so much about everybody being on this call is y'all, if you know why you are doing this, you know, if it's because you want to get your products paid for and you want an extra $300, if it's because you want an extra $1,000 a month to be able to pay some extra, if it's because you want $10,000 a month, the simple at the basics and the how doesn't necessarily matter because that stuff is all figure outable, right? If you know why you want this, why this means something for your family, the way that Kinley decided, like, you know what, I'm going to start showing up. Because I can't imagine owning a hair salon and working 40 plus hours a week and having two small kids and going diamond in less than a year. That happens through grit and grace and working because you know why you're doing it and laying down your excuses. And so if you're here tonight and you're just thinking, just last before we hop off and while um, I kind of close this up, number one, I want to say thank you to Baker for leading, Ashley, for leading this for us. Um, and number two, if y'all were just drop in the comments for Kinley a thank you and something that she inspired you into action for. Because if you're new to one of these calls, you might not know this, but Kinley's not on our team, but this is Plexus. This is what you're a part of when you join this is that if one person rises, no matter what team you're on, we give back to each other over and over and over again, because if one person rises, everybody rises. And that's what you're a part of when you're a part of this company. So if you tuned in tonight, maybe you got a message from somebody like Kinley was talking about with some of her girls that you just have this person in your world that's not giving up on you and you just click so you could be like, hey, I'm on, <laughs> stop messaging me about this. It's not by mistake that you're here, right? There's something in you that maybe wants a little bit more and whatever that is, you're worth exploring. And it's not always easy, guys, it's not. But if you're ready to build your dreams instead of somebody else's dreams, you're not on this call by mistake tonight. So message the person that invited you, kind of sit down after this before the crazy of kids and all the things start coming back in and just dream a little bit. Like, what do you want out of this? And you don't have to know exactly how. That's not why we wanted you here tonight. We wanted you here tonight to know that you can do something more from the same device that you've been scrolling and researching Kate Middleton on, right? It's like there's, there's so much that you can do from your phone to be able to make an impact, both for the people that are around you and for your family and in your world. So Kinley, thank you so much for doing this for us tonight. Baker, thank you for leading this for yes, us. Thank, thank you, you, Kinley. Thanks. Um, for everybody hopping on tonight because you're here for a reason and you're here for more. All right. Night, everybody. Thank you.